Hello, welcome to Web of Stories. My name is Melinda. Um, it's Wednesday, so we're going to have Wednesdays with Will. I haven't had that in a while. Um, March was a month. It was a month. Um, <laughs> it's the best way I can say it. It was a month. Um, and I, uh, because it was a month, I didn't get a chance to, to tell you all about my little experiences with Hal, with Prince Hal and Henry IV, part one. So I'm going to talk about that and the adaptation I watched. They're all now. We're just going to have a little Prince Henry thing. So Henry IV, part one. Obviously, this is one of Shakespeare's histories. And I find Shakespeare's histories really interesting because I, you know, through the years, the centuries, uh, they have become almost history. I mean, if you read, there's a lot of things in Shakespeare's history which are were artistic license by Shakespeare, but are now accepted as history. Um, that's something that I learned as a his, studying history in college. So I always find those really interesting. Um, the other thing that I, I, uh, I find interesting about Henry IV Part One is it's not really about Henry IV. It's about his son, Prince Hal, um, who becomes eventually Henry V. Spoiler. <laughs> there you go. So... And the other character in here that's really of note is that of Falstaff, who we met last month in The Merry Wives of Windsor. So The Merry Wives of Windsor, um, Queen Elizabeth I really liked the, the character of Falstaff. So she, she had Shakespeare write a play about Falstaff. So, but she experienced Falstaff in starting in this play. Um, I believe starting in this play. So that's where we are with this. <sighs> this is basically a story about... A privileged kid who has to grow up. I mean, so you have King Henry the Fourth, who's being kingy, and there's a threat to his kingdom. Meanwhile, his son, the Prince of Wales, is off causing all sorts. I mean, he's not he's not causing trouble. He's just being a teenager. He's uh, hanging around with with you know he and his friends get into like they hang out in bars. They're like little frat boys. Um, they kind of do mischief. They're, I, mean, I don't want to say they cause trouble. They cause mischief sort of stuff. Um, and and Hal, Prince Hal, is just not that interested in doing what he has, you know, preparing for his life as king. And uh, Falstaff is a guy he hangs around with. So, you know, there's all that. And then there's a threat to the kingdom. And Henry has to get his son to step up and be the Prince of Wales and do the Prince of Wales things so they can you know, thwart this threat to the kingdom. That's, that's your story. And he does. That's, that's the story. It's like a kid who grows up. <laughs> it is a coming of age book. Um, and I'm sounding really flippant talking about this. And in some ways, it, it's not because I think this is a light play. It's because I think it's the kind of story that we still hear. Um, one thing that I try to do when I do these, I, it doesn't always work, but I try to find like a retelling to read. I didn't even try with this one because there are a lot of YA novels with this plot. It just is that that sort of growing up, coming of age, becoming an adult sort of thing. Um, that That's what this is. So did I enjoy it? I did actually enjoy this. I did do this as a tandem read. So I read it as I listened to it. Worked really well. I'm doing that again with Coriolanus. Um, although I will say, I don't feel like I really needed to do it with this one. It just... It, it just was a pleasant way of doing it. Um, this is, I mean, this is not a play that people quote a lot, but it's a play people know of. Um, you know, you say Henry IV Part One, you're like Shakespeare. You know, if you had to like sit there and your average person say name all the Shakespeare plays, they they might come up with Henry the Fourth or Henry the Fourth Part One as one of them. So it's not it's not one of his minor plays, but it's also not Hamlet or Macbeth. <laughs> Um, one thing that I like to do when I read these is kind of note when very famous lines have kind of just become part of our language show up. And there were two in here, one of which I did not catch until I was watching the adaptation. I totally went by me reading it, but it totally got in the adaptation. But the one that, that did immediately pop out to me is the better part of valor is discretion. And Falstaff says that right before they go to battle. Um, they say the word zoons a lot in this. Zoons. That's like the little thing they say. Um, and the whole sentence of that, by the way, is, I mean, the better part of valor is discretion is what we say, but the whole sentence is, oh, kind of sticky. That's stuck here. Sorry. <sighs> stuck. The better part of valor is discretion in, in which better part I have saved my life. In which, 
in which better part I have saved my life. So that's the whole thing, basically, no, be careful and you'll live. The other one, so the other one, I totally, I, it went over, it did not stand out to me as I was reading it, but I was watching the adaptation and I will talk a little bit about the adaptation in a second. Um, and the, and I heard it and I was like, oh my gosh, did they just say that? Because it's a saying that I do not associate with Shakespeare. <clears throat> It's I associate with something else. So I was completely shocked to hear it. And that phrase is the game's afoot. Um, to me, I hear that I think Sherlock Holmes. So I looked it up and yeah, this was where that, this play is where that phrase actually did come from. Is from, is, uh, did not come from, I mean, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle took it from this and gave it to Sherlock Holmes, but it actually is from this one. So the adaptation I watched was the episode of The Hollow Crown. So The Hollow Crown was done a few years ago by the BBC, and there's two seasons of it. The first season has four episodes. The first episode is Richard II. The second is Henry IV, part one. The third is Henry IV, part two. And the fourth is Henry V. And then the second season is three episodes, Henry VI, part one, two, three. And uh, this is a production where they bring out the big gun, guns. Um, I had previously only watched Richard II, and that one had like Patrick Stewart and David Suchet in it. I know that in one of these, you get Judy Dench. I mean, we're talking big names. In this one, the two big names were, there were a couple, there were, well, the two big names was Henry IV is Jeremy Irons, but more importantly, and the reason why I watched this, and it was totally worth it, is Prince Hal is Tom Hiddleston. And he is an amazingly good Prince Hal. I really, and he, he, he does appear as Prince Hal in Henry IV Part II and Henry V. So I'm looking forward to those. Um, the other one that I thought was interesting was, um, oh crap, what's the name of the character's name? There is a father and son acting team who play father and son in this. They are, um, ah, Owen Glendower and Edward Mortimer. Is that right? That's who that was. Anyway, it was Alan Armstrong, who was the original Tenardier in Les Miserables, the musical Les Miserables. And his son plays his son. <laughs> um, <coughs> but yeah. And these are also where you watch them and you will recognize by appearance a lot. Of, there's a lot of these actors who are like, I've seen that person somewhere. And they are people who have very, you know, vibrant careers in British theater and they show up sometimes in British television productions. You probably would know them more if you were a theater person, um, but you've seen them before. So these are really great productions and they're done very like historically. And I don't mean that in like how Shakespeare would have done it as in all the women are played by boys, but um, they do it as if it's set in that time. So it's like historically accurate to the time of the setting of the play. And it was really good. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. Um, I tried to get my kids to watch it because they, they like Loki. <laughs> I couldn't quite do it. Um, yeah. Now, my one thing about this, and it's it's not, it's about the play, is I, I kind of wish I hadn't read The Merry Wives of Windsor first because the Falstaff in Merry Wives of Windsor, to me, does not feel like the same Falstaff in Henry IV Part One. Which, whatever, but to me it was a little bit jolting. But, you know, whatever. Um, highly recommend The Hollow Crown, just in general, if you get to see it. As I said, you have Tom Hiddleston, Jeremy Irons, David Suchet, Patrick Stewart, Judy Dench, ben Benedict Cumberbatch is in the Henry VI ones. I mean, big names in this. Um, I got it. I, I had to purchase it, but I purchased it for from Amazon Prime, so it's it's easy to get. Um, so do recommend that if you want to watch some some Shakespeare that's really amazingly well done. So let me get to my rankings here. As you know, um, I try to rank my. I have criteria on which I rank them, and then I have one last thing where I kind of deduct points, and then I use the total to kind of put my rankings together. So. The first one is just what my overall rating of this was. I gave it an A. It was good. Um, I probably, the reason I probably didn't give it an A plus is it's it's kind of a what you see, what you get is kind of play. It's not like, like there's a lot to think about in Hamlet. And there's a lot of plays where there's like a lot of, like you think about it and 
there's like meanings to like the meaning of life and you know death is diving into humanity that's not really this it's a kid who needs to grow up <laughs> um but i gave it an a so that's four my reputation i gave this a, a, a 3.5 and i kind of went for that because it's not one that you teach a lot in schools as people know of it but they a lot of people don't read it um i have heard I don't know if this is true, but I have heard that Henry IV Part Two is kind of dull, and I think that that reputation kind of weighs this one down because this wasn't dull. It wasn't. It was. It was not dull. It was. I mean, yes, there's a battle scene, but there's like one battle scene at the end. Um, there's a lot of a little political conniving stuff, but mostly it's just Prince Hal being a spoiled brat for a lot of the book. <laughs> um, so I gave it a three point five. Mostly because I gave the Merry Wives of Windsor a three and I did think it was better than that, but I didn't think it was like super, you know, the reputation was, it's not a huge, huge name. Ease, I gave an A, four points. It was easy to read. Um, as I said, I did do this as a um, tandem, so I listened to it while I read it, but I didn't feel, I, you know, I don't feel like I needed to do that for this one. And I do know that there are ones that I will need to do that. Characters, I gave this one four, so an A. I did, I mean, the characters are interesting. They're very, they're very uh, believable characters. I have no reason to believe that Shakespeare was off the mark. And I, so I do think when you're dealing with histories, you have to take into com consideration the actual historical character. And was Shakespeare really off the mark? And I don't think he was. I mean, these characters seem to make sense. Um, as I said, I have watched the hollow crown Richard the second and Henry the fourth is introduced in that. It is not, it's not Jeremy Irons in that one. It's, it's another actor because he's younger, <laughs> but I, I don't, I mean, that was the character that I felt like really kind of carried through. Like I, I did feel the character was very similar. Um, so yeah, I would say great. It was good. It was solid. It's again, not super duper complex where you have to really, you know, analyze it and, you know, it, it is. I mean, I, I would believe that that Henry the Fourth was like that, and the future Henry the Fifth was like that. I believe those characters are like they were portrayed in this play. Uh, then poetry. Um, so this is kind of like the the flow of the language. Uh, that I think it was pretty. Are there lines that kind of have become part of our 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 own language? And I have pointed out two right there: the the better part of Valor's discretion and the games of foot. There are not a lot of them, but I did think um, there were some really pretty lines in this that just were kind of like, ooh, yeah. Um, one that kind of, that I did tag, it was the end, act one, scene three at the very end, and Hotspur says to his father, uh, um, no, it says to his uncle, Uncle Ledoux, oh, let the hours be short till fields and blows and groans applaud our sports. I just, I thought that like, that is a very like kind of like hmm made you kind of think line. So I gave this gave this a four point five, which is uh, out of five. That's pretty high, you know. There you go. And would I see this? So the way I kind of think about this is like a four is like if there's a production of this near me, I'm going to go see it. Boom! I will make an effort to go see it if there's a production near me that I can get. A five would be, I'm going to go find a production of this to see somewhere else. <laughs> I would definitely give this one a four. I would, if there's a production of Henry the Fourth Part One around, I'm going to go see it. Not going to travel out of town to see it, but I'll go see a local production. Um, so that brings my total to 24. And then we have Of It's Time. So that's like problematic stuff. Nothing really, nothing really like stuck out to me. Um, and I kind of feel bad about this because one thing I've noticed, and I, I, I'm blaming Agatha Christie for this one. <laughs> Agatha Christie, as we know, and I read a lot of Agatha Christie, has some problems. She's a little problematic, especially when it comes to people um, who are Jewish. And she makes a lot of anti-Semitic remarks, sort of like flippantly. And I think I might have become a little desensitized to that. I say that because I do remember with Mary Wives of Windsor, I didn't think there was anything questionable in it until I saw it and then something like popped out um I didn't nothing popped out to me so I gave this a one j just in case there was something um which brings my total to 23 which makes my rankings as of now number three with 12 points is the winter's tale that was something that was that was definitely something 
Number two with 20 points is The Merry Wives of Windsor. And number one is Henry IV, part one. So this is right now my top Shakespeare play. So there you go. That's Henry IV. That's my all of my March stuff in one video. Sorry, as I said, March was, was a month. Um, I am currently reading and listening to doing tandem. And this one, I, I really do feel like I needed to do a tandem. Coriolanus. Um, there is a production of Coriolanus uh, starring Ray Fiennes. I believe also directed by Ray Fiennes. Kelly at Books I'm Not Reading told me about it. Um, I have not gone so far as to look for it, but I'm hoping that I will have access to it to watch it. And then on May 4th, I am going to go see a production of Coriolanus at Portland Center Stage, which is done completely by uh, female and non-binary actors. I'm really interested in it. And I will tell you, spoiler a little bit for when I start talking about Coriolanus, because I might have a video up next week, at least on the play. Um, Coriolanus is very interesting, and I think it's a very interesting play to read, to see, to experience in our current time in the United States. That's all I'm going to say about it. That's a little tantalizing tidbits. Anyway, thank you very much. Um, if you would like to join in, in with this little project, even if it's just pop in and pop out on my Discord, information down below, we do have uh, the Bard Room thread where we are discussing it. Um, as I said, April is Coriolanus. I do not do a play in either May or December. So we're going to take a month off and then we'll be back with another play in June. So anyway, thank you very much. Like, subscribe, join my discord and I'll see you next time. Bye.